A clock? No, not that type of clock. I mean a redstone clock. A redstone pulse on some sort of regular interval. Like this. You get it. But instead of my dumb ass trying to time it right, I want the redstone system to do it for me. Okay, so how? Well, it's pretty simple. The easiest way to do it is by looping repeaters. You just face repeaters in the opposite direction, hook them up with redstone, and send a quick pulse into the system. It works, but it also sucks, so don't use this. Repeater clocks are very useful, but you want them to be a bit smarter. For one thing, with this system, you cannot turn it off. You have to break the redstone dust, and that's just, well, annoying. But we can fix it. Remove this, add a block there, add some pistons, an observer, and a lever, and we have a smart clock. If we want more delay, we just add more repeaters. This is much more useful and very easy to make. Just set your repeaters to the total delay you want on each side. There we go, we have a working repeater clock. It's easy to build, expandable, and useful in many applications. All right, moving on to faster clocks. These are mostly used for auto dropper and dispenser applications. The most common type is an observer clock. Just face two observers into each other and voila, you have a two tick delay, one tick output redstone clock. This is well suited for a dropper clock because it will pulse at dropper speed. We just use a comparator, a repeater on four ticks, and dust to power into this block. Then put a piston next to it with two observers facing each other with a one block gap. Finally, a block to be powered, and we have an auto dropper. This is perhaps the most common arrangement, but there are a lot of ways to do this. We can also use a one tick clock, not because it will drop faster, but because it is more compact. This is called a comparator subtraction clock. Just put a comparator on subtract mode into a block and run redstone next to both and we're done. Now any power level over two into the comparator will give us a one tick clock. When using this in an auto dropper application, you need to use a target block so that it redirects the redstone and will power the dropper. The dropper will also only start on the 42nd item, meaning that there will always be 41 items in it which may be a good fit for your system, for example, if you're transporting items from a farm, but also may not work if you're dropping something like diamonds that you don't want to build up in the dropper. Okay, finally, we get to the Etho Hopper Clock, which is one of the most useful clocks and is used for medium time spans up to 4 minutes and 16 seconds. We start with two hoppers facing into each other, comparators off of both hoppers into a solid block, redstone dust on both blocks, then sticky pistons on the inside of the dust, and a redstone block over one of the hoppers. Now we can just add some items to one of the hoppers and it works. If you take one on-off signal from the clock, then the timing is 8 redstone ticks or 0.8 seconds times the number of items you have. If we want an off switch, we just add a lever to one of the blocks on either side. This system was invented by Ethos Lab, and it's very clever. The redstone block locks one hopper, meaning it can have items pushed into it, but cannot push items to the other hopper. The system must wait until one hopper is empty to move the block, since extended pistons are unmovable. Once the hopper is empty, the comparator stops giving power for just a brief moment, which retracts the piston, and the redstone block moves, then the cycle continues in the opposite direction. It's pretty simple, but quite clever if you ask me. So these three styles of clocks are the most common redstone clocks used, but there are different types which fit specific situations better than these. I encourage you to check out the Minecraft wiki to learn more about other styles, but with that said, time's up. Please check out the playlist for more quick redstone videos. Thank you for watching.